you're talking about. You know that one, that, that sand one that's right here? I worked and worked that thing today and there, there wasn't anything there. But then I went right over to these other ones where you line up. The circles are humped now? Yeah. Where you line up off the power line. And they were in the, the large mount that were in here. This last, see there's a feet, this, this is the main crit channel. And it's kind of filled in on this area here. It's filled in. Have you noticed that yet? It's, this is this will stay about 17 feet, but back in here it's 19 feet, and the water is going that direction. But then it drops right back down to 20 through here. But this other feeder stream that comes through here, when you called me on the cell phone when you were out there, I tried telling you. <laughs> right here, this this goes all the way. It goes right on down to 20 feet, and it's and on the on the from the crown of the hump all the way down. It goes just like this. It, it, it's not one of these because the, one of the keys to that lake you'll find you'll find structures that they're not even really good structures, but what they'll do, they'll come down a certain distance, they flatten off, and then kind of go down. The fish will use it, but they, it's not as good. Those ones that, you'll find them ones that go all the way, especially when you get back up in this 14 foot of water. You're talking about this, up in here, it's really flat through here, but then it, then it starts to wash out. That you get more of this 20 foot of water through this area here. The only other one is there's a bar. Here's where that, that road comes across here with a bridge. The road comes through here. You know where that one bar comes out. There's three fingers. This one, this one goes all the way to the deepest water in the area. We'll call this. this. That was the 14, but there's one right in here. That was another. That was the other place I told you to check. Is this one here narrows out, and comes out to that right there. And then there's this. This one here would be a real good one to show that up. Uh, because this there's one it just it just peters out it breaks down it, it'll go down to, uh, to it goes down to like uh, 12 feet and just flattens out 12 for a long ways and then goes down and it'll fool you you think it's a good one but it's not because the, the fish will tell you it's not a good one how deep is the river channel right here now the river channel right through here basically stays about 17 to 18 <coughs> Right, there's a, there's an old rock bridge, and right on this side of where the, where the river current was, there's a hole, evidently, where the river went through, it's washed out. We, you know, we were picking largemouth out of it one day, trolling on air before season, but, uh, I don't know, what do you want to, what do you want to know about it? I, no, I just wanted to just explain the, 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 you know, if you only got, when you got shallow water like those great big flats you got, and that's all there is is 14 foot of water, that you don't have, that's the deepest water in the area. And just tell everybody some of the, the size fish and how many contests you went off that. Well, I'm, I'm catching the six pounders out in here. The biggest I've got in here is like a, a fours and fives mostly four pounders but all around through here this when they made this lake this creek channel must have been more gravel here or something because they bulldozed they bulldozed this this must have been swamp and they bulldozed the dirt up 
to make up because there's actually another channel or there's a they got houses through here and then they got a channel they this it's all a man-made lake but there's a there's there's some one finger the only big bass you said he was over here the other day because he got that that big small mouth there's used there's this a finger that sticks out here and I've hit him off of here a couple times but this flat through here the deepest you're gonna find is like 12 foot of water and and I've read through the green book and it's page 190 through through like 195 and just before farm ponds talking about this situation Buck says 12 foot's not enough Buck says you gotta have 14 foot. That's it, and, and, and he's right. You gotta have a leak because through these areas here, more towards the main creek channel, you've got that 14 foot. And through there, there's areas when they when they made the lake the first year. The first year that it started to flood and there was ice, and it formed ice, they had work crews go out there with chainsaws and cut the trees off right at the ice level and uh, and burn the trees right on the ice. Well, it did do a lot of good because now there's big brush piles all over. But uh, it's kind of neat because what you can do if you take a I usually use a 200 because I got a little bit better control with it, but you can get it just just right to where you you can go around and, and and there's there's humps through here and there's there's brush piles but you can take and crisscross this creek channel and you get just the right amount of line out on the on the spoon plug and every now and then it take and then wood the wood now is starting to get a little bit rotten so you don't it doesn't hang up that bad you just give it a pop if you get in it but this year just like today, I lost three spoon plugs working at because I got into the zebra mussels that are getting on the wood, and the zebra mussels cut my line. But uh, I've really done better. I'm, I'm not sure why, other than maybe I got better control, but I've done better from about the the, the middle of the lake back up here. Uh, it, it is a little bit better watercolor, but. Uh, I've done better on, on uh, the bass and walleyes because if you get down, although that's where I caught smallmouth, I got into a, a school of smallmouth today, but they weren't, well you see how, but they're just 16 inches, they, they weren't them big ones, but down by the dam in that area, it's like 25 foot yeah. rip wrap through here the old crick channel the old crick channel comes through this way and this is where they built the they built the dam and you look at it that's why that's why you can go up along that rip wrap for quite a ways on a trolling pass and it'll stay deep for you there's a couple of things in here that look real good, but just like today, I couldn't do any good on it. But coming through here, it goes way back that way. But great big rocks all over the place out in here. I don't know what it's lined off off this point. I don't know whether it had something to do with when they were building the dam or something, but uh, there's these big rocks in here because when you're making your pass, all of a sudden you get into them and you, 
your rod just starts going bam, bam, bam. So, man, you know, it's, it's not wood, it's rocks because of the wood will stick there for a second. To, you know, my, my spoon plug's just bouncing right off of them. But there was a school of smallmouth there today. But unfortunately, it was in the, I went out there in the afternoon and all them, all them speed bolts come through there and they make their loop right through here. So I had to take turns with the water skiers and the jet skis. And, but they was, I'd come around here and as the boat, as the boat would get about right to here, as I started bouncing, right here, it just start running free and bang. Um, I'd rather be telling you this news about <laughs> half in the bags. So <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, does anybody understand what what knows? I mean, this is a lake nobody here spent, and nobody knows nothing about. It. Now, does anybody get anything out of that? There's a very very important lesson. What lake is? Yeah, well, that's fine. You take it down. Let's go catch no, by right there. You just no, it's, it's a very it's a very very important lesson. How many people here take a lake that they fish all the time and can get up there and put it on a board and know every little detail on that lake, every little spot the fish move to, where they go, where they come from, the hard spots, the soft spots, the grooves, the inside cuts, the creek channels, the islands, the humps, the bars, and everything on a whole lake. How many lakes do people have in their pocket where they can do that? Not very many of them, but that's what happens when you do your homework when you're figuring out something. If you know everything that makes a lake tick, that lake ain't nothing no more. And if you can figure out a lake with all that stuff in it, a natural lake is nothing. A natural, what's a natural lake? A few bars, a hump here and there, maybe a slot, it ain't nothing. If it's clear, you go deep. It's the same thing. It's simple. You get on these reservoirs and that's but Buck says the same thing. That's where you run into problems. At. Most, you you go this lake here. This 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 lake in two foot of water. Most of the time, you, you don't you know unless you unless you. I mean, they might show up on a fish locator, but unless you spoon plug, you don't know if it's muck or you don't know if it's just weeds. You don't know if it's rock, pea gravel. But I one of the. Most of the good structure is out in the middle of the lake around the creek channel. And I watch many times I'll have a, a, a bass contest or whatever in these $20,000 boats. I only see them for about 15 minutes when they start out. Boom, they're up and they're up casting the, they're casting the boat docks around the edge of the lake. Because they have no idea what's out there. No idea because they can't see it. They, you know, they, they have to physically see you know, they, they, they can envision, well, you know, well, that's a 25-foot pontoon boat, so I put a little extra weight and cast underneath there farther or whatever. I mean, it's, <laughs> you know, it's... So we tell it tells a lot. There are, but there are some people that, the there's old-timers that, that were around when this lake was built, and I, and I do, I, I'm friends with this one guy, and he, uh, he's caught... He's the one I was telling you about. He's caught when they when there were pike in there. He's just caught tons of pike, but he still catches 32-inch walleyes out there consistently. And he remembers where the where the woods were, where he used to squirrel hunt and all these other places. And he works them over real well. And uh, he's he's a diehard. He goes out there day after day after day, and he, and he and he zigzags the creek channel, and he eventually makes a catch. Tell, tell John Bills what week you won those big bass contests out of the lake down in cold water. Matson's made me. <laughs> nah, I only I just just, just one deal. just one year just one year I had one that big it's just a six pounder but. It, most of these contests around here are hundred dollar contests and people bring in fifteen inch bass, you know, when they think you got a big fish. <laughs> like, hey <coughs> fishing tackle money.
<laughs> well, you know, when, when we fish lakes, though, and we go to a strange lake, before we ever leave the lake, figure the whole lake out, map it, put it in your pocket, and it's always there. Once you got it figured out, you got it. But you go fishing, you can waste a lot of time on a lake if you don't map it, and you're mm -hmm. never going to know what makes it tick. Dave Bishop's pretty good at that. That Wally Kulikowski is pretty good out here. John's buddy. I heard they're tight. I wish he would have come. I bought two pair of boxes, though. <laughs> they were. Oh. Six years. Okay. Yeah. Six years and probably 400 personally, spoon plugs. Personally, yeah. about 300 spoon plugs. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I had a brother-in-law fishing with me, and we, when we first tried trolling deeper, you, you want to use wire. He says, don't use wire. There's trees. You get hung up. You're going to be caught in 10 trees beyond that lure. If you got wire sinking it, no, no, I, I, I use wire. I use wire. I, I watched him lose 30 <coughs> in one fishing trip. Thirty oh, that's a He cleaned out his tackle box. Yeah. And he was so ornery, he, but we were catching fish. Yeah. Buck loves him. I looked at the weather. <laughs> yeah. I looked at the weather map this morning, and you know, and, and I had to do some running and stuff. And I had a couple hours I could get out. Oh. And we have a high pressure park on us, and there's and there's a lake down in uh, Lenaway County. It's, it's called Deep Lake, and it's got real nice trout in it. They've been planting. A rainbow trout in there for years and I mean there's there's 24 26 inch rainbows in there I mean they're just like a steelhead and uh, so I went down there I went down there and I, it's been years since I've been down there but I went down there today to play around with it and uh, I knew there was a 50 foot hole and a 40 foot hole the 40 foot hole has three place three there's there's I don't have it drawn up quite right, but there's three three uh, structures that are real close to the 40-foot hole. This 50-foot is just a, it's got a 50-foot hole, but it's the darnest thing. It's just like a fish bowl. You know, there is there is a bar, kind of a saddle-looking thing that's over here, but I have caught them off of here when they're really getting good. But I went there this morning. <coughs> And I wanted to, I wanted to go with a clean slate. I just wanted, I wanted to think about it. So I went around, and and this is the weirdest lake. You control one side of your boat to be probably five foot of water, and then I got a boat that's only six foot wide, five foot of water, and this side of the boat will be in twenty foot of water. But, but there's a whole bunch of twenty foot before it gets out to that forty foot. In most of the areas, there's only <clears throat> so. What I did, what I did, I I, uh, I went at 25 foot, and I and I went around and got shoreline sightings where I had to turn out just as though I were contour trolling because it's this this lake. It's a clear, real clear lake. It's weedy. You can't you can't just run up over the bar. And, and keep going because you're gonna get stopped. But I made I made notes of where these were at. I got a shoreline sighting. And then I went out to the 40 foot, because it's 40 foot's the deepest, and I ran the 40 foot. If it started going to 35 on me, I went back out again. But I ran the 40 foot. And sure enough, these suckers go all the way. So then I commenced. I put a I put a, a, a plug on that uh, would run about 25 foot, and I trolled and I, and I I stayed in the 30, so I could make a pass across here to see where the fish were at. First time through there, I hit a rainbow. And I and my so I I was in a 30 and I was about and the lure had to be 25 foot down. My rod went down like that and split second later, I got a steel <laughs> jumping in the air, 
throws a lure, and and the lure ran. The lure went back down again. So I just I just kept going. And just as soon as that got back down to the right depth again, I hit another one. I didn't even reel it in. I mean, I hit another one right there. But it was a, you know, you're talking about short movements. This thing, it was the, I hit them two fish and it was over with. I went back, I, I vertical, I vertical jigged it. I, I, I trolled, I, I stacked lures, I did everything, trying to work them fish. Nothing. So what time you hit them, though? <laughs> this this fish here was at 545, 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> this one here was 546. Is that quick? But just you know, it ain't all just catching fish. I just you know just to refresh your mind and just get back to basics and go to a clean slate. It's very, very important. Just like as I've been reading through the green book again and, and you know, we're getting a bad habit. If it's a, if it's a bar or something, we're calling it structure. And it's we gotta find stuff that goes all the way. Cause you're cause I was looking and I see little little neat things out here, you know, something out here. But it it just it just goes to that 20 foot. It just goes that 20 foot. You know, possibly if the conditions are really really good and you don't have a bad front, the fish might stop right here and then go back up. But the conditions we had, those fish went out here. And I don't know if you guys, I used to I used to do a lot of fishing in these lakes like this for rainbows to play around them. I don't know if you guys are that familiar with them or not. How the, the rainbow trout react, but yeah. <clears throat> they they love to suspend. They love to suspend. And so and just like Buck says, says you, guys, you gotta stack your lures. You gotta stack your lures. Um, but it'd be you know a lake like this would be a good lake for somebody to go learn on. Oh, uh, I have. It was it was a shame. Uh, there's. Farmer Bob had his own spoon plugging club, and we were supposed to meet up at this lake one evening to fish it. And I was the only one that showed up, and the conditions were really good. I just get out there, and I caught a 14 pound pike, and uh, and I caught some trout. And I just had a good old time, but I took the pike home and cleaned it, and the meat was pink. Did <laughs> you ever see a pipe that was pink from eating all them trout? His <laughs> meat had turned pink. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's like, man, but draw this.